Can you see me? And can you hear? Okay, I can start. Okay. Respected Professor Sayyid Tanvirji, dear embassy staffs, my dear friends, brothers and sisters. We all know that the world is celebrating the 150th anniversary programs of Mahalma Gandhi in a big way. The two year program started in India and also abroad. to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Mahalma Gandhi is going to conclude on this 2nd October. And on this occasion, I would, I would like to greet you and I would like to congratulate you for organizing such wonderful programs in your country, in the island of Mali. I am sitting very close to Mali in Rwandram. And I am familiar with a lot of Mali people also. They are coming for, for treatment and other purposes to Rwandram very often. So just because of the familiarity, I have a special attachment to the Mali people. And let me greet you from the nearest of your country, from Trivandrum. Now let me come to my topic, the topic of today's presentation. Relevance of Mahalma Gandhi in the modern times. Before going to the subject directly, I would like to share how people view Mahalma Gandhi, how in the different sections of the world population, considering and accepting Mahalma Gandhi. For the people of India, the motherland of Mahalma Gandhi, they are viewing, accepting and considering Mahalma Gandhi as the father of the nation. The architect of India's freedom and also the apostle of peace and non-violence. This may not be totally correct to the people around the world. They are viewing Gandhi and the Gandhian philosophy on a different plane. With the peace activist, activists or those who are engaging in peace activities, they consider Mahalma Gandhi as the father of the modern peace movement. Mahalma Gandhi with his weapons of Satyagraha, non-violence Satyagraha for fighting against injustice as water may be, is an injustice. He gave the people of the world a newly wonderful weapon that is the down where the Satyagraha struggled. And that is why they are considering Mahalma Gandhi as the father of the modern peace movement. On the second count, 
the people those who are engaging in environmental activities or ecological activities they are consume mahatma gandhi on a different plane they consume mahatma gandhi as the father of the modern ecological movement or modern environmental movement remember this is happened at a time even the world environment or ecology has not coined at all that time gandhi did this wonderful work of protecting the for the survival of human being man should to have the responsibility to protect the nature and the, he should live in harmony with the nature is the third count for those people who are engaging in the field of natural living and naturopathy they consider mahatma gandhi as a father of the modern medicine people rarely knows the contributions of mahatma gandhi in the field of naturopathy and natural living gandhi himself was a practitioner practicing doctor during his lifetime almost one third of the activities of mahatma gandhi his speeches writings and actions all are done in the field of naturopathy natural living and vegetarianism so that is the basic concept gandhi advocated during the time we should not treat the uh, uh, treat the disease we should have the treatment for the causes of the disease reasons of the disease that is what we are still looking forward all the all the pandemic even period we are struggling with each other by finding out a solution for the treatment of the disease is the covid 19 the covid 19 but here the question comes we should find the reasons for the calamity the pandemic and we should have started the curing process by treating the reasons of the disease so the natural living and naturopathy or the traditional medicines of each and every country they are all fo- focusing they have been focusing this type of treatment not the the allopathic treatment so gandhi did gandhi practiced during his time this type of treatment that is why he is known as the mod the father of the modern medicines then recently quite recently there is a thinking about the manager expense those who are engaging in social management that mahatma gandhi did some pioneering work in managing the human activities theoretical solution is is not going to be a solution at all unless otherwise it is going to be proved in right in solving the practical aspects so mahatma gandhi was a champion during his life lifetime in finding out in managing very complex situations in managing people in managing situations in managing solutions let me tell you an example of his manager expert expertise during the sar satyagraha movement of the indian freedom struggle gandhi decided to go for go for the salt as a symbol of the 
सद्यक दाव मोमेंट ऑलमोस्ट एवरीबडी लाफ्ड एट हिम एस्पेशली इन द ब्रिटिश रूलर्स दे सिंपली लाफ्ड एट हिम एंड ही सोन क्लोज फॉर फॉलो वेज दे रेज्ड देयर आईब्रोज व्हाई गांधी गॉन फॉर दिस सिलेक्शन ऑफ द सर्ट एज अ सिंबल ऑफ द फ्रीडम मूवमेंट ऑफ द कंट्री when the satyagraha started and when gandhi took salt in his hand at the at the dandi sea show the people of the country ro- roamed behind him and uh, that uh, that time only with the followers of mohan gandhi they could realize with the potential of gandhi reasoning of connecting each and everybody of the country the poor and the the poor and the rich the influential and the non influential the ordinary people and the big people by just taking salt or as a symbol of the movement he connected the length the whole length and breadth of the country so, so that is why this reason thought about gandhi's as the father of the modern manager manager concepts then i am going to talk some generally new topics that mahatma gandhi is going to be recognized not at known going to be recognized as the father of the two different crucial aspects one is a development process and the other one is a media related journalistic activities as we all know that from the very beginning of his gandhi's public life he had been running journals of of his own while he was in south africa the indian opinion in india the young india and harijan through these journals gandhi always tried to educate the people to raise public opinion and also to give an awareness about what he what he is going what he was going to do always he had been talking with the people all the letters that he received he he replied through his media of journal so the from by concern this fact the world is going to recognize gandhi as a father of the modern media now we all know that media is corrupted just like any field of human activity media enjoys a lot of influence position in any countries helm of affairs so when media is corrupted more than anything else they are going to give with a with a total picture of the country they are going to make the awareness creation and other things in the moment the society is going to be very badly affected so the world is going to recognize gandhi's contribution in the field of media related activities the next important point mahatma gandhi sacrifice is about the developmental process now we all increasingly knowing the importance of simply not in the development concept but the developer is the is a sustainable development process so 
everybody is talking about development not simply but it should be sustainable development perhaps gandhi was the first person who had aired his voices for the development process that is going to happen he streamlined five conditions for the development process if if we want to make it sustainable the number one criteria number one condition is a condition of the philosophical balance the balance between material aspects and the moral aspects unless we are not having a, a proper balancing of these two aspects the society will collapse immediately there is no doubt about it how it can be possible only through the optimization of the wants and needs of human beings for a what are i going i am going to amaze i should amaze from that thinking to man optimize thinking of i need only this much and i should not have amaze everything what i am seeing the second condition of the development activities is the structural balance it is nothing but the balance between the big cities and also the with the rural areas now the, what is happening around the world is cities are going like anything by exploiting the poor rural villages maybe gandhi is a first person who categorically said that it should be complementary and supplementary the cities should have the responsibilities to support the rural villages and the rural villages should also support there should be a, a harmonious relationship between the cities and the rural areas the third aspect is the ecological balance and through the focus of the ecological balance gandhi now considered as a father of the modern ecological movement ecological balance is nothing but the balance between the human being and the nature he is living so balance between man and the nature that is a ecological balance the fourth aspect is a technological balance now we are living in the world of artificial intelligence if the machines are going to replace either role of human beings or individuals that that is the place where technology now stands there should be a balance between the big technology and the rural appropriate technology both are entirely different big technology is used by multinational companies or, or big production centers they need it but we should have a clear distinction between it as to how long it can be useful and how long it should be used gandhi himself uh, had given the answer in the moment the technology is going to control the human being it should be stopped so by coming back to the technological balance the balancing of the big technologies and the rural technologies for a harmonious sustainable development 
on the fifth count. The distribution balance. I think that is going to be more important. We all people in the, in the all the world countries, they are finding it very very difficult to distribute their income equitably among the people. We have been seeing several income distribution methods adopted by different systems in the in communism the system they use or still trying to use is liquidation by liquidating the capital by liquidating the rich people They are getting the power from them and uh, transferring the power to the labor class. That is, a, that, that, that is what they are advocating. So, liquidation was a technique used for that, for, a, for the establishment of a welfare state. The second method adopted was confiscation by forcefully capturing the properties from the owners of the property and uh, in the name of say that we are going to transfer the property to the ordinary people but nothing happened all went wrong and on the third round in the system that is that uh, that is in the process that we are using in democratic countries and also in capitalist countries is the system of trisation. We are calling it as progressive taxation. And whatever may be the technique adopted for for having an equilibrium or equitable distribution of the wealth of the country. Those things never had a permanent solution. So Atatay Gandhi came with his theory of trusteeship as the most powerful technique of equitable distribution of income. He was not advocating. for capturing the ownership of the property of the rich people in a step. He had gone on the other way. The owners of the property, they are continued to be the owners of all their property. They can enjoy the ownership title. They can take money for and utilize the money for their own genuine needs and not for meeting the unlimited wants. That is the focus. They are not having the right to utilize the money for meeting their unlimited wants. For genuine needs and genuine wants, they can utilize their property. And at the same time, with the remaining wealth, the remaining income he should utilize for the welfare of the people, those who are living around him. So on one side safeguard the ownership title and on the middle side there is a string to control the utilization and on the other side they should have the responsibility to meet their money for the welfare of the people, the poor people. So that was that time Gandhi, the technique Gandhi advocated for the equitable distribution of property. And uh, still 
this technique of trusteeship is very live and people are growingly people are increasingly thinking that this may be is a potential weapon for solving the problems of distribution of wealth among the people then on this background i will be telling that the coming age in the coming ages gandhi will be always going to be recognized as the father of the modern development process the modern concept is a sustainable development now i am going to bring your kind attention on another dimension is a theoretical evolution of all the human theories till this time is a foundation of all the theory started from darwin from darwin survivor of the fittest theory that was the first theory the second one was the lazy for philosophy the theory of perfect competition as time passed people had a thinking of something revolutionary should be needed then is a well came with the theory of utilitarianism it is nothing but the welfare of the majority if we are safeguarding the welfare of the 51% of the society everything is all right everything is okay and what about the 49% of the society they are simply neglected and again another theory evolved and that is huxley's live and let live theory live and let live that theory is also gone forever we should not say that gone forever we can see it on the highway sides as 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 a signal board live and let live as an evolution in the evolutionary process the next theory evolved and that is pretek kropotkin is a russian saint anarchist his theory is the theory of mutual aid if human beings want to survive they should have the responsibility responsibility to help each other that is mutual aid from this theory the theory of sarvodaya philosophy evolved by mahatma gandhi at the hands of the revolutionary hands of mahatma gandhi is the theory says live in order to help others to live see the a revolution taking place in developing mahatma gandhi's theory live in order to help others to live by helping others to live we should live so the first theory the theory of darwin to live by having only is the fittest man second one live by allowing the competition winners third one live by allowing the majority and fourth one live and by allowing let others also live 
fifth one live by helping others and when we come to gandhi the end of process is changing the the changing process is live in order to help others and uh, i should say here that gandhi was superior gandhi is superior and gandhi is going to be superior forever if you are studying evaluating and analyzing the theoretical developments on on the basis of theory gandhi will be superior forever then coming to the another question of the practical aspects we have seen that how gandhi is remembering all over the all about the all around the world by different sections of the society then is the theoretical relevance of, of the gandhi and gandhian philosophy then coming to the questions of the practical relevance of mahatma gandhi and mahatma gandhi's theories we all are coming to the question of is the purpose of development the purpose of development is for the equitable distribution of all the wealth among the among the people there is no doubt at all all the development projects when we are starting when we are th- when we are deciding when we are implementing we should have a always having a thinking that or we should have three questions on our hand for getting answers in the first one is the development is for what the second question is for whom and the third question is why and how if you are going to get convincing justifiable answers reasonable answers of the above three questions then we shall proceed otherwise we should not go at all to that level i bring your attention to the first book written by mahatma gandhi in note 9 is the hind swaraj hind swaraj is known as the bible of mahatma gandhi the magna carta of mahatma gandhi a small book Uh, writing when he was returning from south uh, returning from england to south africa wrote in a single sitting and when he published the hind swaraj there was a, a lot of criticism a lot of criticism is the only the only philosophy only philosopher who supported mahatma gandhi was leo tolstoy nobody else all the eminent economists all the philosophers around the world everybody criticized mahatma mahatma gandhi and they were about to kill mahatma gandhi remember the, uh, it was a starting point of mahatma gandhi's career in south africa he was about to accept the the uh, leader of south african free, uh, south african movement and the only person who wholeheartedly supported mahatma gandhi was leo tolstoy even mahatma gandhi's guru the political guru of mahatma gandhi gobal krishna gokhale he also criticized by saying that 
when Gandhi returned to India after seeing the real, after understanding the real situation of the country is, he will destroy the book. But nothing happened. Mahatma Gandhi continued to be evaluated on the basis of that small book, Hindu Swaraj. The focus of Hindu Swaraj is what is self-rule, what is freedom, what is independence. That was a focal point. And the second point was the, is the method that should be used for the attainment of the freedom. Uh, and uh, as the method of the freedom, he pioneered for the selection of the non-violent Satyagraha. And uh, the third part is, after the attainment of the freedom, what should be next? He himself gave the answer. For the safeguarding of the freedom that we are going to achieve, we are going to get, is the economic self-sufficiency of the country. The economic self-sufficiency of the country. You see, at the time of India's freedom, happening or after the India's freedom. Several countries got themselves independent. I know in almost all the countries there there was problem. Almost all the countries. They do not know how to manage the freedom that they got. So that was a place where Gandhi gave more focus. The goal that is going to be attained is the freedom. And for attaining the freedom, the weapon that, that should be used should be 100% reasonable. And it should be non-violent Satyagraha. And after the attainment of the freedom, the focus always shifted to the economic and social planes of the country. For that purpose, Gandhi developed his own constructive programs, the nation building activities. And among the constructive programs, the most important is the Sadeshi movement. The most important is the Sadeshi movement. Sadeshi is nothing but the production, conception and distribution of the basic commodity that we are using should be produced by each and every individual. Each and everybody should have the responsibility to manufacture, to produce the basic needs. And to that extent, that individual is self-supporting and, and he is going on the path of self-sufficiency. When his family is going to accept this method, that family is going to be self-sufficient and self-supporting. Then that village, then that state, then that nation. I do not claim that each and every product that we are going to use in our daily life and, and all our activities, that can be produced in our own individual families or our, our own individual native place for the 
then there should be another focus also. By using their resources, by using their own resources, if they are having the resources in their hand, each and every should have the responsibility to, to produce the, the basic needs. If we are having the basic resources, not having the basic resources in our hand, and in the name of going for Sodeshi, producing things in our own place, nobody can have the right to simply waste their precious time, precious money, and precious energy. So at that point, everybody is having the right to go for the products that is produced abroad. We are not simply shutting our eyes in the name of Sodeshi. We should accept what is good. And uh, what, what can be produced in our own place? Then uh, I, will, I should invite your kind attention. Of our Prime Minister's recent talk, the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra, Narendra Modi ji, for overcoming the problems of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister advocated for the Alma Nirfar program. He declared that India is going to focus her all attention for the implementation of the Alma Nirfar program. Alma Nirfar is Nadim but is a Sodeshi gifted by Mahatma Gandhi. You see Gandhi's talent in understanding the problems of, of the ordinary people. And also going for solutions of the problems faced by the ordinary people. So I myself is having the experience of more than 22 years experience in the field of the Sodeshi activities. Starting from the very fundamental item that is making our soap items to the all the items that is needed by any by the family members of the society. We have developed more than 300 products so far and even we developed some medicines for, for controlling cholesterol, for controlling stomach upset and also as a preventive medicine for cancer. Everything purely depending upon the locally available resources. And uh, my experience over the years proved that the path I have selected for spreading the message of Mahatma Gandhi is 100% correct and that is the reason why I am getting so much importance among the people and also among the national leaders here in Kerala Sadeshi is not simply a word a, 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 a dream word 
it is a practicing aspect for the rural people to make their own things basic things in their own family this is the practical aspect of mahatma gandhi and by celebrating the 150th anniversary when it is coming to a close i portrayed i portrayed the picture of how gandhi is viewing by different sections of the people around the world and uh, where is the gandhi theory stands today and uh, tomorrow and on the practical aspect on the on satisfying fulfilling is the actual needs of ordinary people where it is standing so that is what i want to make your kind of attention while concluding i would like to quote two quotations One is a quotation that is given by the great scientist Albert Einstein. On the occasion of the 78th birthday celebration of Mahatma Gandhi, Albert Einstein sent a greeting to Mahatma Gandhi by saying that it may be scarce to believe that such a one ever in flesh and blood has walked upon this earth it is 100% true we cannot and nobody can think that such a person like gandhi has walked upon the earth then is the second quotation at the time of the shocking death news of mahatma gandhi the person is no lesser than a person he is a, he is the greatest philosopher bernard shaw he made the comment that it is too dangerous to be too good see the is the power of the quotation it is too dangerous to be too good so that's all my dear pradesh and sisters who are listening i should thank each and everybody for giving a pain patient attention and also to the embassy people especially professor said tanwarji and her colleagues for giving an opportunity to make some observations on the occasion of the concluding ceremony of the 150th anniversary of mahatma gandhi let me allow to to keep it on record the congratulations and also the appreciation appreciations on behalf of the national committee as a member of the Na- gandhi 150th national committee i make this opportunity to congratulate congratulate all the efforts that is going on on the part of the embassy people to spread the message of mahatma gandhi not only on the occasion of the 150th anniversary but in the coming years thank you very much jai hind